Abduction. Kidnapping, child theft, body snatching, whatever term one wanted to use, it was among the most common fears among any parent Darren McKinley had ever met. In the back of every mother's mind, every father's mind, there was the threat of someone, somewhere, taking their baby away from them. A neighbor, a relative, the eternal boogeyman invariably called the stranger. Among those parents, Darren had only known a single one to have met that threat. Not once, not twice, not three, and now not even four times. Sato had discussed Pegasus Crawford, Malik Ishtar, and Amalda at length. The fourth Darren didn't know. But Darren did know that, whether the abductor had two names, or one name, or none, he had never come out on top against Sato Kaiba. He was the ultimate target, and he had never failed to meet the challenge head on and come away with victory. If, if there was any chance in hell of you getting out of this alive, you just threw it out the goddamn window. Darren felt his heart clawing its way through him, up his throat to escape his body and shoot this bastard itself. Fury did not begin to describe what he felt right now, as every bad memory of his long career flashed into his vision and personified themselves into this. Why so hesitant, Seto? Oh, dear. Are you not feeling well? Shut up, you son of a whore. Just shut up. <laughs> oh, but it doesn't sound like the great Seto Kaiba's finally losing his composure. My, my, have I finally convinced you? Do you see it now? I think, yes, I think you do. How wonderful. I think your beloved Nisama sees the truth now. Don't you? Oh, poor darling. Are you frightened? Shh, now, now, no need for that. You won't feel a thing. You can trust me, little Kaiba. It won't hurt at all this way. You see? I'm not evil. I don't derive pleasure from this. Now, now, there's a good boy. Calm down. No more crying. This moment is the first time I have ever wished for hell to exist. Even if it means that I am headed there myself, it will be all the compensation I would ever need to see you there first. You flatter me, Seto. I hate you. I know. If there was one thing Joey Wheeler and Tristan Taylor knew how to take advantage of, it was underestimation. Tristan's entire body was corded steel, ready to spring at a moment's notice. It was just like the old days. People had always marveled at how well they could read each other's movements, and usually came to the conclusion that Joey and Tristan could read each other's minds as well. And it almost felt like that. Sometimes. Without a word, Without the faintest sign, Tristan started moving. He veered to the right, and Joey came sliding up behind him to the left. Before Sawatari could even take his hands from his pockets, before the smirk ever left his face, Tristan sent a savage kick straight up into his groin. Joey gave him no time to recover. He latched onto the man's bear-like right arm and swung it over his shoulder. He remembered that Tristan had tried this maneuver back at Duelist Kingdom when they had first met this giant. He remembered that it hadn't worked, that Sawataria had decent reflexes despite his size, and knew where his friend had gone wrong. Instead of letting go, Joey rolled his target over his shoulder and slammed him into the floor with a crash that shook the walls. <laughs> Joey jumped backward, and Tristan, not missing the opportunity, stomped into Sawataria's throat. The pistol Darren had given Tristan was in his hand, and Joey didn't remember when he had drawn it. If forced to guess, he would have said that Tristan didn't remember either. But it didn't matter. He leveled it on Sawatari's face and grimaced. I've been using this for years, and people have told me never pick up a gun unless you're ready to kill someone with it. Take a guess if I'm ready right now, you stupid son of a bitch! Tristan, wait! What? You're gonna tell me this fucktar doesn't deserve it? Kidnapping the kid twice isn't enough? Are we seriously gonna give him a third strike? Oh, he deserves it, but not from us. This is Kaiba's fight, we're just backup. If this idiot was a threat, I'd say go ahead and waste him. Lord knows you'd be doing a public service. Kaiba's fight. He's a big brother, so am I. You're a little brother, you know well as me, this one's personal. Let Kaiba handle it. 
Search him then. We aren't gonna get the jump on him twice. Sawatari surged upward. Tristan was pitched to the floor, and all at once, the roles were reversed. Sawatari's glasses had fallen off, revealing eyes that were too small for the concrete slab of his face. Narrowed nearly to paper cuts as he wrapped his clawing fingers around Tristan's throat. Okay, now he's a threat. Do you know, Seto, the saddest part about all of this? The fact that you're stupid enough to think it will work. The fact that you've sunk this low. That you're so pathetic, you can't even commit suicide by yourself. You don't know, do you? You've truly managed to delude yourself. Impressive, but sad. Tell me something, Seto. If you had to describe yourself in one word, what would that be? Bored. Is there a point hiding in this monologue somewhere? <laughs> you know the word I would choose? Enlighten me. Gambler! You're a gambler, Seto. You've chosen your career. You've chosen your hobbies. Every choice you make boils down to that one irrefutable truth. You exult in the rush. You live for that challenge. For the constant, looming, towering threat that makes the game worth playing. You could lose. You don't want to lose. Oh no, but the thought that you might lose excites you, doesn't it? You have me confused with Moto, which would be insulting enough on a good day. See? Right now you're hedging your bets. You're hoping to anger me by being flippant. You figure that I'm out for attention, that I'm looking for a specific reaction, and that if I don't get it, I'll lose control and you'll have the advantage. You're also betting at the reaction I want isn't the one that you're giving me. You're enjoying this. You're having fun. This is a game to you. And it isn't one to you? You're going to have to be honest with me, Seto. I know you better than you think. You live for this. Speak clearly for once in your fucking life. See, Mokuba? He's deflecting. You can tell, can't you? You know your brother better than anyone. You can tell when he's lying, can't you? He's lying now. He heard me perfectly clear. You've roped him into this charade for more than enough already. Don't make it worse. He still hasn't answered me. You see? I speak the truth, little Kaiba. Your esteemed brother has an addiction. He cannot help but put anything of value onto the table, just for the thrill of winning it back. And what if he loses? That, dear one, is the fun of it all. Shut your mouth. This smear campaign is just as useless as any other tactic you've tried. Are you done reveling in your own self-pity? I'd like Mokuba home before midnight, if it's all the same to you. Anything of value. Even his family. Even you, Mokuba. Especially you. Why else would he put you in the spotlight so much? Why else would he make it so painfully obvious that you were his weak spot? Why else would he be so lax in securing proper protection for you that you've been taking from him four times in the past three years? Hmm? Think about it. Just think about how many times he has let you come to danger. Why would he do that unless it was to win you back? It serves a double purpose. Not only does it save his addiction, but ensures that you remain dependent upon him. The more he saves you, the more you cling to him. Do you see? This is ridiculous. Well, you see it, don't you? You see the truth behind your brother's <laughs> selfless devotion to you. God damn it! As Sawatari spun around and all but fell against the wall, Joey lost his chance out of sheer shock and adrenaline. His breath left him in a heave as the formerly helpless bodyguard turned kidnapper drove an elbow into his midriff. Tristan spied the gun Detective McKinley had given him, lying prone and harmless on the floor. No time for doubts. It was time to go home. Do you know what you should do, Seto? Seto didn't answer. It didn't look like he could drive a single word out from behind the folded steel of his clenched jaw. He looked like he wanted to speak. Oh, he wanted to speak very badly. Fury held him in an oath of silence. Fury and fear, and God only knew what other torrent of emotions. 
Why don't you tell me? The words finally tore their way out, as if to find the oath as soon as Darren even thought of it, as if Sato was hell-bent on proving any and every assumption about his character, whether vocalized or not, entirely wrong. Since his usual flippant anger hadn't gotten him anywhere, he was now due to fake politeness, with more than a hint of that same anger showing through in the fact that he wasn't at all interested in making it sound sincere. Come down here. You're quite tall, you know, and it must be so uncomfortable for the boy to have you looking down on him like that. Why not come to his level, at least for this final meeting, so he can have a single memory of just what you look like from an even point of view? This had nothing to do with Mokuba anymore, if it had ever had anything to do with him. Siegfried had played his final hand, the final step toward his own personal nirvana. This wasn't about Sato being level with his brother. Mokuba was perhaps the only equal Sato would ever acknowledge. This was about the indomitable, the unbreakable, the untouchable, forced to his knees. And Sato achingly followed it. If Mokuba hadn't looked terrified enough, watching his brother sink to his knees for likely the first time in his entire life was enough to crush any remaining will to fight the boy may have been nursing. His entire body seemed to sink along with his sibling. He looked like he was trying to shake his head again, but couldn't bring himself to do it. He couldn't find the strength. It just wasn't in him anymore. Now, tell him the truth, Seto. Tell him that you have no idea how you're going to get him out of this one. Tell him that your luck has run out. Do you think he can't tell? That I can't tell? Tell him what you've known for several minutes now. You don't have a way to get him out of this one. You can't think of one. Because there isn't one. No? Well, that's fine. Change is gradual, after all. Let us try something more comfortable for you, shall we? Lie to him, Seto. Lie to the boy, then. Tell him what he wants to hear and what you want to tell him. Lie to him and tell him that you'll get him out of this, that everything will be alright, that you just need a little longer to <laughs> handle me. Go ahead, Seto. You know they're right there, on the tip of your sliver tongue. You know you want to say them. If you can't find the courage to let him die with the truth, that's fine. Let him die with comfort, then. Lie. Mokuba? Listen to me. Listen to your big brother, Mokuba. Listen to me. Do you hear me? Are you listening? Don't listen to him. This isn't a lie. When have I ever lied to you? When have I ever looked you in the eye and lied to you? On the ride home from Gozaburo's funeral, when you asked me what happened, what did I tell you? I told you that I didn't kill him, but that I certainly drove him to do the deed himself. I didn't want to tell you that. You were barely seven years old, but I promised myself, I promised you at our mother's funeral that I would never lie to you. That you would always hear the truth from me and nothing less. This is not a lie. Do you hear me? Do you hear me, Mokuba? I'm getting you out of this. You will get out of this. I swear it to you, on my life, on my life and on the vow that I gave to our mother on her deathbed. I will get you home. We're going to walk out of here together. We're going to go home, and you're going to get some sleep. I'll stay with you until you do. You can sleep in my bedroom if you like. I'll put on your favorite music and you can sleep in my bedroom. How does that sound? Mokuba was crying full force again, and Darren spied a trickle of tears coming down Sato's face now, too. He seemed not to notice them. He was too focused. He couldn't afford to break what limited contact he had with his brother. I love you, Mokuba. You mean more to me than anyone or anything else on this earth. I will not let this happen to you. Do you hear me? I love you, and I have never been prouder of you than I am today. Are you listening to me? I would never gamble with your safety, ever. I would never put you through this willingly. I would give anything to keep you from this. I swear it. Begging. 
He was down to begging. You want to see me broken. That's your angle. Do you want my company? Take it. Do you want to see it destroyed? I'll run it into the ground myself. Do you want to see me dirt poor and clawing at a living? I'll give every cent I have to anyone who wants it. I'll live on meat scraps and dirt if that's what you're looking for. I'll be a fry cook. I'll be a shoe salesman. I'll be a paper boy if that's what you're after. I'll starve in an alley behind a grocery store. Strip away anything you want. Break me in any way you feel like, but damn it to hell. Leave him alone. He's been through enough. I'm surprised that you didn't decorate this place a little better for such a grand event. Is it for the irony? Do you want to see the great Sato Kaiba finally beaten and broken in a place like this? So far from the luxury he's accustomed to? Why not a warehouse then? Why not some repossessed meth lab? Hell, why not the dump? That would be the ultimate metaphor, wouldn't it? Why so few people? Why not make a fully public spectacle of it? You seem to already know how this is going to end, so clearly you're not afraid to die. Or if you are, for some fucked out reason, you've decided this is worth the cost. So what's this about? Why not have more spectators? Why not show everyone in the whole damned city if it's so important to you? Indeed. So this is what you're gonna do? Turn everything we say into some half cock psychotic one-liner? Apparently, this is fun for you. Your own private play. How many acts are left, hmm? When's the grand finale? Right now, if you prefer. No, no, no. God, no. Don't be an idiot. You know damn well you're not done yet. This is far too entertaining, and you haven't broken either of them yet. Isn't that what this is about? Breaking the enemy? You haven't even broken your hostage yet. He couldn't keep his eyes from his brother. He couldn't keep his mind on anything except the fact that he failed. This was his fault. He had done this to himself, to the detective, to his baby brother, to the brave, stupid young men in the middle of the mission fighting for their lives while he sat here on his heels, trying to hold together the withered remains of his self-control with a mind that was hell-bent on betraying him. Not that he was surprised. He'd betrayed Mokuba. Why shouldn't he betray himself? No. His eyes snapped wide. Something clicked. It felt... like... an answer. The most ironic part, the sweetest part of it all, was that the answer had come from Siegfried von Schroeder himself. The idiot just didn't know it. For the love of all that was holy, the bastard didn't know it. Suddenly, Sato was shaking from a sudden rush of adrenaline. Suddenly, the terror was gone. The despair was gone. The hopelessness was gone. Burned to cinders by a blaze of hope. Sato thought of a man he'd thought long buried in the recesses of his memories. Thought of a man who wore blood-colored suits and had eyes so perfectly frozen that they made the sun shiver. He thought of a man who would have stepped into this room without a single care, who would have seen Siegfried von Schroeder dead long before ever coming to this point. Because if there was one singular thing no one could do to that man, it was get the jump on him. Sato thought of the only person who had ever defeated that man. And as he slouched off any semblance of emotion, as he shed hope and fear and love and hate, as he threw off the shroud of confusion and the blindfolding apprehension, as he finally remembered what it was to be a Kaiba, he thanked that man. In that moment, in that moment only, he would have loved that man if he had the time or the energy to love anything. But he didn't. He had an objective to complete. You are quite the machine, and when a task must be completed, there is nothing except that task. <laughs> there it is. You've decided, haven't you, Seto? Well then, take it, old friend. Do it. Let us find out what happens together, shall we?